Hi guys, it's me Susie. Thank God. Thank God we have our blessed hope in Jesus. I am so sick. Well, I'm almost over being so sick, I hope. And I thank God for people who have been praying for me. Um, no, it's nothing serious. Don't go there. <laughs> But it's been on my heart. I've been making notes for a couple of days now about hope. And our hope comes from the Lord. And how could you not need hope? And how could you not understand? And mostly I'm speaking to unbelievers. That this world can't have what you're looking for. We're all looking for hope. One thing I wrote a note about. I try to make a note if I can't get to doing a video when I feel prompted about a subject. And uh, <coughs> I've been using this because I ran out of tissue paper. I mean, tissues, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there's going to be a rapture. First Thessalonians chapter 4. We'll read that hopefully before I finish this video. Um, there's going to be a rapture. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the air to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. It will happen, just as everything else has happened that's in the Word of God. But you know, when the tribulation happens, this has been on my heart for a few years, since my eyes were opened, many years. All of you out there... Um, after the rapture, the final seven years of tribulation, during that time, and I'm sure if you really take a good look, you'll see what's going on in the, in the world of evil, that they're, they're gathering up all sorts of um, chaotic um, disturbances, let's say, in the world. And all of that is, is, is leading up to chaotic, a chaotic world, so the world can make so the Antichrist can come on the scene and make order out of chaos. Because after the rapture, they're going to need somebody to make order. And everybody's going to fall for this false savior, the Antichrist. They won't know it's the Antichrist. They're going to believe it's the Christ. They're going to believe he's the savior coming. Or they're going to believe he's a savior. They're not going to believe that he's the Antichrist. They won't even think about it, probably. I don't know. But he's going to be working for the devil, as is anybody who is not born again. That's why we need to be born again into Christ, not so, so we can be rid of the, the world and rid of being under the, um, under the sin nature. You know, sin has dominion over us until we are called upon the Lord, until we call upon the Lord to be saved. So until then, we are run, we are controlled by the God of this world, Satan. But think about this. In the seven years of tribulation, this is probably the third or fourth time I've tried to get to that point <coughs> in this video already. Excuse me. Um, people are going to be uh, escorted out of their homes, sent into FEMA camps. This coronavirus thing that's going around um, is the start of making order, making the order uh, out of chaos. It's the start of all the chaos. People are being... Um, they're starting off with people who have been, are being um, isolated with that coronavirus that came here in the United States from China. But you know that's leading to much greater um, isolation and much greater consequences of this created environment of this virus. And I can leave a video down below to show you that this was created. This virus was created by on purpose and planted in these places where it's at work. It didn't just happen. It didn't just happen. No, it started suddenly. And that suddenly came when that virus was planted where they wanted to get the chaos started. So let's not go there on this video. But so after, after the rapture, things are going to happen that are going to cause you such great disturbance. And you're, like I said, I'm sure you don't expect to have a nice, cozy, comfy home, I hope. After the rapture happens, you're going to be um, ruled by the Antichrist. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He starts off with stealing your joy, stealing your home, uh, your family, 
you're going to be separated and you know people are going to be thrown into those FEMA camps you've been hearing about they've been speaking of it's no joke I also believe that people who and you know there's gonna be great great earthquakes um, there's already been some but there's gonna be a great earthquake over 7,000 people will be killed the Bible says I think that's right and um, think about this how much do you like being able to see visually see with your real eyes I'm not talking about spiritually, just spiritually. It's good and it's it's best that you can see spiritually and know what's going on. But those of you who wear contacts or eyeglasses, I feel the Lord has been pounding this on my heart for so long now. I better say it. You're going to probably lose those glasses in a great. Um, maybe you, you there's a great chance you are not going to have. Um, um, access to your glasses or maybe even your contacts or the contacts will have to be out removed from your eyes from debris or something but then you're not going to be able to see it all and no one's going to help you find your glasses or contacts there's not going to be eye doctor shops down the street to help you anymore no 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 this world's going to be turned upside down and turned into a war zone so my suggestion is to all of you out there who don't literally have eyes to see physically and you're re relying on this world to provide glasses for you, I ask you, please, please stop relying on the things of this world, including eyeglasses and contact lenses and anything else that's of this world. Gas masks, if you have an oxygen tank that just came to me, anything that's keeping you <coughs> going in this life that you need of this world, you're grounded in this world. Okay, if, you're, if you change the way you're thinking and see that there is something greater going on in this world and you can't really change the way you're thinking but Jesus can that's what I'm getting at if you get born again saved by the precious blood of Jesus none of these earthly matters will affect you after the rapture because you'll be taken up you won't be left behind in all these troubles that are coming and that's one great problem I know is going to be happening people who are blind as a bat without their glasses or their contacts it's going to be bad enough that you, you don't you know, have what you need and you're misplaced and you're not going to see, you won't be able to see, period. Open your eyes spiritually, please. And, and look to Jesus. He is truly our blessed hope. The glorious appearing of that great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be coming soon. Titus 2.13 is, is, is that scripture about our blessed hope. Jesus Christ is your only hope. He will give you a hope in a future with Him for all of eternity. He came to bring you life and life more abundantly. He wants you to surrender to Him so He can, so he can do all that for you. You don't want to be stuck here in this world. This world has absolutely nothing to bring you hope. Zero. There's no hope in or of this world. Zero. But the hope that you need and you will find and you will be blessed with is what Jesus has waiting for you. And no eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has in store for those who love him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish. Perish means to be sent to hell with those who are in love with this world. But you'll have eternal life. You'll have everlasting life if you believe in Jesus. What are you waiting for? Are you waiting for to see if there's proof of what we've been telling you? You don't want to live through that proof. You want to be living in eternity in heaven with Jesus instead. The evil of this world, from the music to the sports, don't watch that stupid Super Bowl. Well, you probably already watched it by now. It's 5 o'clock Central Time here on uh, February 3rd, I think, Sunday. And I couldn't even go to church today. I missed it. Because I'm sick. Um, but I've been feeling this in my heart that I need to share something with you. Those two things are in my heart. If you're wearing eyeglasses, that's another reason why you want to call on Jesus. It's something that you need and depend on in the world. See, you cannot put your faith and your hope and trust in the world. They will, it will always let you down. But Jesus will pick you up. He'll lift you up. Higher than the highest mountain. 
He'll take you home with him to heaven for all of eternity at the rapture if you surrender your life to him now because the rapture is upon us. It's very near. Everything's closing in on the, on the, on the things that are written of in the Bible that are supposed to happen. All the signs are here to show us that Jesus is due to show up any moment. And again, he's your only hope. How can you stand having no hope? Without Jesus, you'll have nothing to, to look forward to. Zero. But it, with Jesus, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by Him. He loves you so much. He really does. He stretched out His arms on that cross for you. He shed His blood on that cross and died for you. He died so you can live. And me. For whosoever will call upon His name to be saved. Please surrender to Jesus. Time is so extremely short. Don't believe the lies that you hear of people saying that it's not short, that there's still time. Don't believe those lies. You may take your last breath in those lies. In the meantime, while you take that last breath, where are you headed? Do you know for sure you're going to make it to heaven? If the answer is no, well, you can know for sure that you will go to heaven. You have a promise from the Lord. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's saved from hell. So if you call upon the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. You will not be sent to hell. Don't wait. Please, don't wait another breath. Stop what you're doing right now and tell the Lord Jesus you need him and you're looking forward to your blessed hope in him and ask him to forgive you of your sins so you too can be saved. Call upon his name. I'm going to stop the video right now so you can go do that immediately. In the name of Jesus, I pray that happens. God bless you all. In Jesus' name.